Hello, my name is Lucas, this is Bit of Lit, and I'm here to talk to you about Children of Dune by Frank Herbert, which uh, was an incredible novel, um, the third in the Dune saga, that follows what happens after Paul Atreides. Paul Muad'Dib leaves his lion throne as the emperor of the... Uh, all of space, <laughs> basically, uh, ruling from the planet Arrakis, known as Dune, where the spice melange uh, has some magical powers that help with space travel, uh, it makes people addicted, turns their eyes blue on blue, and so on and so forth. Um, it follows the story of his children, who uh, him and Chani left behind, and they were preborn, so to speak, much like their aunt Aaliyah, who is uh, the sort of regent empress in charge of running things, although they have lives within lives within lives within them. They are full-grown <laughs> supercomputer adults in their own right, but physically still children. Um, and this novel is the one to really seal the deal and make Dune what it is. From what I read, it was a bestseller, sold out, uh, all this kind of stuff uh, as a hardback um, in its first publication and was just, yeah, the one that <laughs> sort of cemented its own legacy, the, the Dune saga legacy anyway, and um, I can see why, because the story uh, following uh, Paul's children is so complex and full of political intrigue. There are so many characters <laughs> vying for control or their own options or decisions that they want so that they can be leaders. Um, or they can put somebody in a leadership position the, that they want and, or, you know, <laughs> there's just so many hands clawing away for power. There is, uh, uh, a boy from the Carinos family who, uh, the last leader was the previous emperor before Paul Muad'Dib, um, uh, Shaddam the fourth and his mother and him well not for long anyway but they work together to try and uh, plot how to eliminate the <laughs> the um, uh, twins uh, the space guilders of course they also have their own plots involved we don't see too much of them but they have their own interests um, the Chom, the sort of mega space corporation, has its own interests in <laughs> uh, disrupting the source of power for um, for those on Arrakis. Uh, Jessica, Lady Jessica, the mother of Paul, uh, comes and has her own plans for the twins, and. Uh, Aaliyah, their aunt, has her own plans too, and nobody once asks the twins what they want. <laughs> and they've got their own plans and their own plots, and the way it works in this novel is just so rich and confusing in a way because people will be acting in their own interests but then things won't turn out the right way for them for what they were planning and they have to constantly adjust what they're doing go with the flow when they know that what they're doing is now going to benefit someone else but they have to creatively think of how to <laughs> make it benefit them and that constantly happens there's all these political struggles with all these forces moving people here moving people there you know, it's like a seven different people playing chess against each other at the same time. Uh, and it's brilliant. I mean, it's really well executed and I love it. Um, yeah, I just, I was 
fascinated. I constant. I never knew what was going to happen next. I never <laughs> felt like I had a grip on what was going on in terms of who's planning what, who is working for who now for the smaller political pieces, so to speak, <laughs> Duncan Idaho or um, Gurney Halleck, for example, uh, or Stilgar, the, the elder Fremen that uh, was a guide for, for Paul Muad'Dib. And there's this other character, the preacher, that many believe is Paul Muad'Dib returned, uh, who is saying a lot of things about the religion surrounding Muad'Dib uh, that are uh, disruptive in their own right. And I've got to say, with all the plots and twists and turns in this story, we find out that it, the preacher, by the way, is Paul. Um, with what we find out what Paul was running from, and what Aaliyah is afraid of, and what she gives into for her fear, what happens with her, uh, and all those voices within voices, lives within lives that she's dealing with, that the children are also dealing with. Don't call them children. <laughs> they will not like that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's perfectly setting up God Emperor of Dune. Uh, later, Atreides II, of course, uh, is now becoming a maker, a uh, human. Well, he's becoming a sandworm. Uh, he's also becoming a human sandworm mix. And this is the vision that Paul was running from, this horrible future. And this is the vision that Aaliyah feared and found another method out uh, that ended up not working very well for her. <laughs> I don't want to spoil too much, but um, yeah, just... And then, you know, the aftermath of all these political intrigues coming to a close and, you know, resolving all of these issues, just unsettling <laughs> but I look forward to what's gonna happen in God Emperor of Dune um, and we'll see after that uh, if I'm interested in the next two but uh, or the next one at least uh, but I yeah I can't praise this book enough I thought it was I think I still prefer the original the most I think the the tension and the political intrigue um, yeah, much simpler to follow, but much, I mean, they're both well executed, but uh, it sort of follows some tropes that I'm more familiar with and subverts them too, um, but its pacing is really brilliant. I think I prefer the original, the first volume to this one, but it's a thrill ride and is really great and is really well done. Uh, <laughs> And I can't praise it enough. I just, I love it. Okay, thank you. Goodbye.